I'm Kelly from the Royal Bee Yarn Company. I'm Tony. I'm Kelly's husband. I'm also from the Royal Bee <laughs> Yarn Company. This is episode four of our vlog, yeah. which is um, coming to you not live, but from our <laughs> store in Pacifica, California, where we have our own yarn brand. Yeah. For you squisher files, there <laughs> we have our own yarn brand. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of it's more than our own yarn brand. Actually, we. Um, um, source the fiber from um, 18 micron merino sheep from um, here in the United States. That's tiny sheep. 18 <laughs> micro merino sheep. <laughs> They're tiny sheep. And you then, mean the yarn from those sheep is yeah, 18 yeah, microns. Yeah, the yarn. yeah that Because a tiny. micron is a, 100 microns a human hair. So ours is 18 microns. So it's a fine, delicate yarn. Hence Aww. the scrunchability. <laughs> And then we have it um, custom milled for us, um, also here in the U.S. Um, and then it's hand dyed in natural dyes. It is hand dyed in dyes. So it's a non-super wash. It's really good for the environment. It comes from happy sheep, and we're very proud of it. And we have it in, um, we have it in fingering. We have it in DK. We have it in worsted, bulky, and super bulky. I should have had you say that. Yeah, I would have remembered that as well. Would you? What she said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what are we talking about today? How are things out there? And um, this is episode four. Um, it's the end of the fourth week. We're coming up to the fifth week of uh, um, the or shelter in place in California. Or is this starting the sixth week? No, I think it's the fifth. I've lost all track of time and yeah, days. We have uh, it's yeah, we have Monday yeah. or Tuesday, who knows? Yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, so how are things? How are things being with the shop? They've been good, yeah. So we've had lots of um, deliveries. Tony's been doing a ton of deliveries, getting him out of the house. He's really <laughs> appreciated. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, he has from like 7.30 until late at night. Um, he's uh, he's a teacher. So... I work at uh, the local school, Sunset Ridge Elementary in Pacifica, yeah. and I'm uh, I'm not a teacher there. I'm uh, kind of assisting the principal with uh, assistant principal, assistant to the principal kind of his, his title is Dean of Students because he doesn't have his credential yet. So yeah, he's okay. not an assistant principal. Um, Tosa. Tosa. I'm a teacher yeah. on special assignment. Yeah, so but, that's why yeah. I do. But um, we're involved in distance learning. Very interesting. I'm sure you're very interested in all this. But yeah, it's been a busy week. Um, the kids are yeah. engaged. The kids have, have come back after their spring break. And they're taking part in all the lessons and the teacher stuff. We're really proud of those kids. We love you kids. Sunset Ridge. Um, Pacifica kids, they're doing so well. We're so yeah, proud of them. it's a great school district. It's yeah. been really impressive. Yeah. The pivot has been really impressive. And um, and I've been eavesdropping on some of those meetings and it's just, it's incredible. The creativity and the dedication mm -hmm. and just the, the heart of um, the teachers who are just really yeah. wanting to make sure that the kids are getting a great Very education, but also that, you know, the kids that need it or getting meals uh, two times a day and also um, they've been really good in terms of providing Chromebooks and hotspots and making sure that there's equity in terms of or as much equity very as good. possible very good in equity terms of, very um, important yeah yeah um, so, anyway, anyway but the sun has come out that's I think summer uh, spring is arrived in Pacifica this week it's been a beautiful week beautiful yes. I said in America when I said that it's been a beautiful week <laughs> it's been a beautiful week. And yeah, that's more well. The sun that's is better. out. <laughs> and it's glinting off our van, which you will see me driving around if you make ask for any deliveries in the Bay Area. We deliver free to the Bay Area residents. Yeah. If you live in Pennsylvania or somewhere, I'm afraid you're gonna have to pay me to go that far. We ship. <laughs> yeah, we ship. We ship. Anyway. So what's new? What's new? What's new with you? Oh, I just told you that, didn't I? What? What's new with me? What is new? Oh, I've got a, a mark on my head. I am. Um, uh, I'd like to say it was in doing something very brave, but I actually it was because I dropped a peanut and I bent over <laughs> to pick it up, and I caught my head on the coffee table. I knew you caught your head, but I didn't know that it was for a yeah. dropped peanut. Yeah, I really wanted that peanut, <laughs> and I got it with blood. And that was uh, that's my exciting news of the week. What about? Oh yeah, we groomed. We well, I uh, Kelly groomed my beard <laughs> this morning. She did a really good job, um, doing that. I'm very proud of her job. Kelly's hair is I cut and Tony dyed cut. Kelly's hair last night. Yeah, he cut my hair and dyed it. <sighs> that was the most stressful 45 cut. minutes of my life. <laughs> 
I cut an inch off. <laughs> it was Look way good. more than an inch. I mean, well, it was about that. That's two inches. Yeah. <coughs> it That's... was, yeah. It was like I'm that not very much. Good with it inches. was like that. It was like that much. Yeah. It was like that much. I, I think like five like, centimeters for like, uh, European viewers. Um, I think that's completely. And then accurate. we dyed your hair. Yeah. Then we dyed my hair. I have no more roots left. And yeah, he did a great job. It was yeah. really good, but it was tense because um, when he was putting the dye into my hair, well, firstly, I usually go to a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, Chris. Um, and. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, but he um, was like dragging it on my scalp and I could feel like the well I had to get those roots those roots were stubborn <laughs> and when you dye in hair I because you know I gave up on hair in the mid 90s um, it was just a dreadful state I was working in a kitchen and I had my hair tied back in a glamour gorgeous luxurious ponytail and one of the long, one of the kitchen porters said, "Hey, Baldy." Hair to like, hear. Yeah. Ringlets, blonde. Uh, yeah. It's really sweet. So I shave, um, and then I was in a band, and a manager said, "You need to get rid of your hair." So I did, and I and this is what came out: this bald yeah. head. I think you look much better. Bald. Love it. Don't have to worry about showering. Just shave it once a week, and it's the best thing you'll ever do. Shave your hair. Just get <laughs> rid of it. You don't need it. So um, there's a couple of things that we're going to do um, this segment, one of which we did last segment and we're going to do, we're going to try to do every week, um, which um, is to show two different types of yarn that I have available in the shop. And then the other thing that we did a little bit earlier today was we did a Zoom video conference with um, a FIFA. A of FIFNITS. FIFNITS. Um, she's an amazing designer, a great friend, and so um, we interviewed her and asked her some fun questions that we plan on, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll have um, people on every single week and so ask some similar questions, kind of like a getting to know you um, segment um, is the concept. Again, unrehearsed. Yeah. And We'll probably um, put it in after this segment. Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah, I'll introduce it. Oh, okay, okay. I'll make it so seem really like fresh. it's really They won't notice They'll the never cut. notice. They'll never notice. They won't even <laughs> notice that we did it in a different part of the shop. Right, right. Or on a different platform, which yeah. is Zoom, as opposed to our iPhone. We're yeah. so high tech. Anyway. So, yeah, so I wanted to talk to you guys about two of the yarns that I have in the shop. And this is one of my all-time favorite indie dyers. Um, it is Sincere Sheep. And um, she is, she lives in Napa um, and she uses natural dyes. And what I love about this yarn so much, it, um, the base comes from um, the US and it's Cormo. And so it has, it's soft, but it has all this incredible texture and really, really lovely uh, stitch definition. And I don't know how she, I don't know how she does it. Um, as somebody who does uh, natural hand dyeing myself, her colors are so amazing. She is clearly a master at um, her formulas where I am grasshopper, but um, they're just beautiful. And I have um, them in a fingering weight. I carry them in DK and I also have um, hers in worsted. That's how much I'm in love with her yarn. Um, Tony's going in. <laughs> So that's one of the colors. This is another beautiful, beautiful color. So rich and consistent. This is kind of one of my favorite colors, ballerina. I call, I mean, this isn't what it's called, but it's that ballerina slipper, kind of dirty ballerina slipper pink. Which, Mayday. Mayday, that's sweet. Look at this, isn't that rich? This is like such a rich forest green. Ooh, isn't that like the compliment on the color wheel? Almost. Oh, what is what is the orange and blue oh. and green and oh, purple? I got that terribly wrong. That's okay. I'm a teacher, <laughs> not an artist. And then here's this gorgeous purple. This is just a selection of the yarn of the colors that I have. But this one, I like some this of one. My, yeah, it's like a it's super raspberry. Rich. It's yeah. actually called collage. You don't have your readers on. I don't know how you're going to collage ring. Oh. <laughs> How about college ring? <laughs> <laughs> that would make more sense. Which I 
which I bought this at Ruby. <laughs> So that, um, so this um, retails at 34 and um, if you want a virtual tour um, of the shop, I can show you the other weights and colors that I have, um, but this is just wonderful. And um, did I mention her name's Brooke? She is an awesome person too. She's helped me a lot. I mean, I'm such a newbie in this yarn world and um she has a lot of experience and two and a half years been, this. Yeah, yeah she's just been so gracious with um her information and knowledge and you know helping me at events etc just to get my feet wet she's a wonderful person i love her so um sincere yeah. sheep sincere sheep made in napa yeah, famous for napa. the napa wine and the wine train which is really good if you go to napa do the yeah, wine we train did that. It was a really bougie thing. I mean, it it's was. completely bougie and boozy. Yeah, bougie. I don't remember the last part. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you didn't. You could barely walk. They give you a lot of food and a lot of a lot of wine tasting. It's too Great much, fun. and I don't drink. Yeah, it's just love. I mean, I did. So I did the tasting. I do but, it again. And I it was spit so it fun. out. But I'd watch the levels of wine you can see. <laughs> we took my mom. It was something my mom really wanted to do for her birthday. I think. Um, I by you know, and my mom. My mom likes her wine. Like she really likes her wine, and um, Tony's not a big drinker, but my mom, my mom can hold her own, and she's only a tiny little lady, yeah. but she even was like, "This is too much." Yeah, like, it was crazy. It was it was a lot. Crazy. Um, I think we should, didn't pace ourselves at all. No, we didn't. It but, was just yeah. like, <laughs> and that was before we got on the train. <laughs> it's true. Let's go on to the next. But it's, uh, it's fun. It's a fun thing. It to was do. fun. Napa, yeah. the Napa wine train, as mentioned in the TV show. I, they mentioned it on a TV show, um, that one, The Scientists. Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory. <laughs> As mentioned on Big Bang Theory. So, anyway, I prefer yarn to wine. Um, and then, kind of, um, again, like I like to do, um, I like to make sure that I have great yarn um, that's, you know, also eminently affordable. And uh, Lamb's Pride is also a really, really wonderful yarn. This is such a good, like a great starter yarn because it's so robust. Um, I have this in worsted and in bulky, and I have some sock as well. Skein. It is a skein actually, as opposed to a hank. This is the true definition of a skein. So, um, wait, it's, what? Yeah, so you have What's balls, a skein? skeins, and hanks. I know what a ball is. And that's a skein. I know what a skein. Yeah, oh, this is a skein. Know, this that, is a, sorry, that's a hank and, oh, that's, a hank. and that's a skein. Yeah. So my mini skeins are actually mini hanks. Theoretically, yeah. But people use them interchangeably. Okay. So, yeah, this it's fine. This is a skein. Real skein. And it has, um, it's, uh, it comes from a farm in Nebraska. And this is such a great felting yarn as well. And um, I know that I'm obsessed with the wave of change jacket and have been promoing my own yarn but this is a great bulky alternative mm. um so i i love this yarn and i have it and, I, and they do a really nice job in terms Lots of the colors i'm just gonna show a yeah, range just of colors. a few oh yeah range of colors and these are only ten dollars and fifty cents so you get an awful lot of yardage and it's so robust like i said i often recommend this for beginners because you can you know, get started, pull it out again. I did my started. first project on that again. Did you? Yeah. Was this the, that's right. It was your first project. Even though Tony, I, I keep trying to get him into knitting. I feel like he should. And at some stage is going to happen because he's very artistic and he Could loves do. to paint and he, you know, I'm he decided even, crocheting or knitting. I don't know. I don't know. I crocheting, don't you can great. make like flowers and objects. Mm. Well. Yeah. Kelly White. I, I wear these almost every day. I wear one of the you her do. design crocheted um, flowers. Out Even of my during arm. this time, you are washing and dressing. I am washing. <laughs> I am washing and dressing, mm. <laughs> and putting on makeup and coming yeah. to the shop every day, whether I need to or not. It's a yeah. you know. It's I feel really uh, privileged that we have a shop. That I mean, obviously, it sucks that we're shut. Um, we're trying to, you know, do more online and, mm -hmm. and well, we're just keeping our brand online for the moment. But... And of course there's dinosaur sandwiches, which just I make know. the best sandwiches. <laughs> Gonna plug <laughs> them again. Love, they yeah. make the best sandwiches. So, um, yeah, it's been great that we're able to 
to come here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so those are two uh, very, um, very different uh, price point yarns, um, mm. very different yarns. Uh, but um, yeah, there's something for everybody. Yeah, here. and but you know, in order to use these yarns, you need to be able to design, which link brings oh, us to our link. Oh wow! Let's meet that a was local. So don't smooth. spoil it. <laughs> Let's meet. Let's have a chat with a local designer, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> and we are here with Afifa, who is a phenomenal designer. Um, and Thanks. otherwise known as Fifa Knits. She's also a good personal friend of ours. So we decided that we would try virtual interviews uh, with Afifa because she's friendly. She won't, you know, hit us if we do a really difficult <laughs> job. <laughs> if I can get close us. enough to hit you though, I don't know. <laughs> Any kind of touch is welcome right now. <laughs> so Afifa, where are you now? Are you in Oakland? Yes. I'm in Oakland. Oakland, yeah, yeah. San yeah. Francisco Bay. In your, with your family. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I've kicked them all to their rooms. <laughs> and told them they're not allowed in here until we're done. <laughs> okay. And so, so this is like our new little, this like is this is the, the first this, time yeah. we've ever done this. And then it's like a, a new segment. We'll see if it works and whether or not it's something um, fun and enjoyable. Yeah. And we thought we would ask um various different designers and yarn makers and industry luminaries of which a few mm -hmm. um, oh, i'm so honored <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna pretend this is my award okay thank you. i'd like to thank my mom <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna try to ask them all the same questions okay um and okay it's like getting to know you getting to know your industry luminary maybe we'll have a jingle or something eventually so do 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 design yeah, no a corner way. yeah <laughs> do 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 no, no, no. yeah okay okay so where did you grow up afifa um all over so i was born in pakistan and i moved to spain when i was really young and then i lived in england for a few years um back to pakistan for high school then malaysia and I've been in the States since, well, for a very long time, <laughs> wow. over 20 years now. Yeah. Isn't it, isn't the rule in California that like, if you've lived here for seven years, you're native? Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I remember when I first met Tony, he asked me where, where I was from and I was like, Pakistan. And he just looked at me and blinked. <laughs> and then he goes, so you're here just for this? <laughs> I think he meant, where do you live? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm from Pakistan. And he was like, okay. <laughs> I feel like it's a particularly like American question to ask because, or I shouldn't say American, a, a thing from the United States to ask. Mm -hmm. We lived in the UK for, I lived there for 20 years. Tony grew up there. And I think when you live in other countries, people just assume you are from that country as long as you have that country's accent. Mm -hmm. um, they never right. ask. It's, it is a particular question to us. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm just interested because we're all from someplace else. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Question number two. <laughs> Ooh, you're taking turns. I mean, yeah, I yeah. Um, no, no. When you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> A marine biologist like every other little kid. Oh, that's right. We had this conversation that I wanted to be a biologist as well. <laughs> One of my best friends is a marine biologist there, and she studies uh, limpets in Scotland. What are limpids? They're those little conical shells that hang around on rocks. And when you try and grab oh. them really firmly to rocks and things, and she studies them, okay. they're fascinating. They have a fascinating life. Hmm. Not what I envision. There are, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. There are deer running up my hillside. Yeah, there oh. it goes. <laughs> so I'm going to put your Okay, so you can see. What did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a veterinarian. I used to play like, um, you know, veterinary hospital or a florist, flower shop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cover your, cover your bases. Yeah. <laughs> you, you could just combine the two. 
exactly. Pets and flowers. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, this is an interesting question. If you were stranded on a desert island and you had to eat just one meal over and over again, you had one meal over and over again for your whole duration of that desert island stay, what would you mm-hmm. Biryani. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Biryani. It's uh, yes. Should I wait until you're done with the call? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna say it. It could be an order. I can edit this out. It was a sale. It was Yay! A sale. Okay. Yay! Okay. <laughs> Even I had a chat about school and stuff. But anyway, so what was the question, Cal? Oh yeah. So the question was, if you were stranded on a desert island and you had to eat the same thing over and over and over again, the same exact meal all day, every day, for the rest of your life, what would it be? And there's a biryani, which is a curry. Biryani. Um, it's like, a rice pilaf. Rice pilaf. Ooh. So it's like spicy chicken and potatoes and rice and just all sorts of yumminess. Will you make it? I mean, I don't know how to get that rice is. on an island, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> yeah. Um, are you, um, do you make it yourself? I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Can we invite ourselves over for dinner and will you make it for us when this is all over? Yes, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) It has to be made like in a quantity for 50 people. I can't make it smaller than that. (laughs) It's ridiculous. I'll have three portions. It's all good. (laughs) Great. Okay, so um, next question. What was Uh, yours? What was yours? My Desert Island? Yeah. Oh, and nobody cares about me. Okay, true. Uh, I care. <laughs> <laughs> Lobster and um, salad with blue cheese dressing. <laughs> That's really random. <laughs> Super random. What about you, Tony? Um, probably um, prime rib. Um, prime rib mashed potatoes. Really simple. Since we're both vegetarians, it's funny that both of us like um, went, to the uh, went straight. <laughs> went straight. <laughs> <laughs> to me <laughs> doesn't matter um okay what is your um favorite type of music say that again your favorite type of music oh gosh i don't i listen to everything i've been listening to a lot of show tunes lately oh yay <laughs> which is not my normal but you know it's like we all get into it and sing and <laughs> That yeah. sounds dance fun. kind of <laughs> um my younger daughter's really into musicals so a lot of times i just listen to that stuff with her um what about your favorite color blue red or purple kelly pink, pink. <laughs> duh <laughs> okay um favorite movie or movie genre Oh, definitely the whole Pretty in Pink, Sixteen Candles, Breakfast Club, that whole. John, no, no, John, uh, John Hughes. John Waters. No, what's that? Sorry. No, John Waters is Hairspray. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I'd ask my husband, but I kicked him out of the room. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) I'm totally dating myself now. (laughs) What about you guys? Um, well, Jaws is my favorite film of all time, but of course, I, I, like, I like horror movies, which is difficult because Kelly doesn't like horror movies I don't like at all. To be scared. So I have to. Watch I will them. totally go watch horror movies with you. Yeah, okay. done. Done. Because I, I have to watch them when she's. I. That, that's why the quarantine at the moment is really useful for getting caught up on some of the horror movies I've never watched before, and I've seen a couple of bad ones and a couple of good ones. Like older ones, or then. I kind of like ones. ones. Yeah, I like older ones. Um, like uh, Rosemary's Baby, I rewatched that the other day. That's a really good one. And mm-hmm. a, modern, a good modern one is uh, Midsummer that came out. Um, what was this year or that last year? I'm not sure. That. that was a great film. I haven't seen that one. That was really good. Yeah, yeah, you you'll, you won't survive it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like you like it. it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, okay. That's so all you, I wrote. Yeah, that's all I wrote down. But that doesn't matter because um, we can, we do this all the time. We can go off the cuff now. Yes. And did uh, you want to ask? I have questions question? too. Oh, yes, wow. That's right. Yeah. Oh, when did, <laughs> when, did you start? <laughs> when did you start? Super excited. Do I get to go? 
when did you start to knit or crochet or both? Which did you learn first? Good point. Um, my grandma, no, my mom taught me how to knit when I was nine, but I never learned how to cast on or bind off. So she would cast on for me, I would knit, and then she would bind off. Um, then I stopped and I really took it up seriously when my younger daughter was in kindergarten. So about, wait, how old is she now? Like seven years ago? I don't crochet. I want to learn. Oh. I know how, I know how to crochet a little bit. I'm not, I, I'm a knitter who's learned to crochet. Um, yeah, I, I can do like basic stuff, but not anything spectacular. Me neither. And when did you um, discover your design talent? Well, I've been in the fashion industry for a while. So before I started knitting, I was designing activewear for um, pregnant women because I'm very active and I was running and I've gotten really, really big with my first child. Mm -hmm. And there just wasn't anything out there like to support my gigantic belly. <laughs> so um, I started doing that. And my whole family is in the fashion industry. My mom's a designer, my brother's a designer. Um, and then when I started knitting, I found that I never followed a pattern. Mm. I would always change it. And I was like, well, I should give it a shot and see if I can write the stuff because I always wanted to just create my own thing. Mm. And that's kind of how I started. And do you, if you weren't a designer, what do you think that you would have been? Oh gosh. Marine biology. I don't know because I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be creating something because I just really love creating stuff. Where'd you get your inspiration from? Can you pieces? You're, you're all over Instagram with your pieces. Um, a lot of the time it's just something that I want for myself. Right. Um, you're going to think this is super weird, but I come up with my best ideas in the middle of the night <laughs> because I'm a bit of an insomniac. <laughs> I'll like all of a sudden pop out of bed and be like, oh my God, that would be amazing. And then I have to try and figure out how to actually construct it. So I usually come up with the idea first and then figure out if it's even possible to create it in a knitted format. And because I know absolutely nothing about knitting, <laughs> how do you start the process of this? How do you get from that idea to the finished product? What's the process? Um, I usually sketch something out. Mm. I'm a terrible artist as far as drawing goes so I sketch it out nobody ever gets to see my sketches um, and then what you do is you knit a little swatch figure out how many stitches per inch or whatever and then there's like this whole you have to use a lot of math and graph things out and figure out how many stitches you need to create a certain shape and a certain size and then kind of go from there a lot of math isn't it there's a lot of math yeah which I also love so I've got like a ton of spreadsheets and things like that, which most people don't really connect with knitting. But yeah, I've got like a spreadsheet for every single pattern that I do. Are you good at like birthdays and things? Do you make things for your families and friends? Make things for them? Yeah. Or, yeah. You don't make <laughs> I used to make things for my kids and they would lose them and it would really hurt my soul. So I stopped. <laughs> um, and I, my sister just takes things that, I, that are on my body. So if I ever, whenever I, we meet up somewhere like in the middle of, you know, in between, we met up in London one year and um, I was wearing the scarf and she's like, that's really pretty. And she just took it off. She's like, it's mine now. <laughs> My brother does that. I, I tend to give. I, I usually would, give. Like, Tony's I would, would be buy like, a great oh. watch or something, and my brother would say, oh, I, that's a nice watch. And Kelly would, like, sneakily say, give me the watch, give me the watch. And then she'd give it to my brother. And it's just, so, so me and my brother <laughs> have this joke thing now. When we see each other, you'll sit, look at me and go, oh, nice watch. <laughs> I automatically so you just have to wear things that he's not going to like when you're around him, right? Yeah, I try. I try. Um, mm -hmm. My brother likes orange, so yeah. I try to avoid wearing orange things around him. <laughs> um, so when, um, you go back to Pakistan a, a lot, or do you? Um, I used to go back every year when my kids were younger. Um, my dad passed away about a year ago, so that was the last time I was back there. Yeah. So I... Well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go this year just because of what's happening. 
Yeah. And then my sister and I try and meet up somewhere in the world every year mm. so that I at least get to see her. Your family knit over there? Uh, my mom knits. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's yeah. Okay. And it was, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go, keep going, keep going. Oh, she, it was really funny. A couple of weeks ago, she called me and she's like, I'm going to make this scarf for your nephew. Um, and she asked me for advice. And I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> because she's the one who taught me to knit. <laughs> and I felt so special. She was like, oh, okay. She's like, well, I can't do the amazing stuff that you do, but I can knit a scarf. And I was like, mom. Aw, that's lovely. It was really sweet. Aww. So do you have any questions for us? I have questions for you, Tony. Oh, <laughs> I heard this was coming. I say that. Did, did you study up? I did. I studied up on yams and <laughs> on yams. That is not a yam. That is a potato. Yeah, it is a potato. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I was outside the shop yet yesterday, and somebody shouted out across, "Are you selling any yams yet?" <laughs> so that was nice. Is that your special store potato? It is. It's a store potato. Are you waiting for it to start growing? <laughs> it starts to grow a little bit, yeah. I, guess I brought it in last week to do a joke and I forgot to do the joke, but um, yeah. Oh. It's getting kind of wrinkly and funny. Yeah. There's no yarn squishing in this one. What's going on? Oh. Well, we're going to we're gonna build the show around <laughs> this section and that will include... Oh, okay, got it. Okay. All right, so I have three questions for you all really this beginning. Is this... They're, okay. this they're pretty easy. Just take a deep breath, it's okay. You're gonna be fine. <laughs> okay, so question number one. Yes. What do you call someone who knits? Now there's an obvious answer to that. It popped into my head, but I suspect that's a trick question. So I'm gonna say a knitter. Yes! <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Not a trick answer. Wow. <laughs> so I'm just messing with you. <laughs> okay, so this is a good one. If somebody comes into your store and asks for a good fingering, what are they referring to? <laughs> well, um, fingering weight is um, like, it's a very fine um weight of yarn it's above um lace i think lace then fingering then sport then dk then worsted bulky chunky spunky and <laughs> dopey <laughs> i am impressed i was not, not expecting you to get yeah. that one yeah I, <laughs> have you been studying no, no, it's when we go to stitches, I yeah, have to learn I made that off him. My heart. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. I made um, it the very okay, last, last question. Okay. Um, what is frogging? Frogging? Is that a knitting term? Mm hmm Well, it's when you jump over a stitch. <laughs> Frog jump. That is an or, excellent but, no, but it's wrong answer. When you have to read a pattern to the end, and then you say, read it, read it. Read it. <laughs> keep going, keep going. I know you can. Is, there, is it something? No, am I keep close? keep going, keep going. Just keep going. <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't know. What, keep what keep frog it up. What else? No. What else? I don't what know. What else could it be? <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. What is frogging? Um, it's when you rip out your work. Oh, it's called so, Oh. Rip it. It's makes because it makes you know you're ripping it out. Rip it. So it makes I I don't I okay. I've been told that's why it's called frogging because you go rip it. Rip it. <laughs> rip it. That's good. Yeah. I did pretty well. You did do pretty well. Three. That's six out of three ain't bad. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, that that was that was great. Okay, that was awesome. Afifa. Yes. Have a good joke. Do I have a good joke? Do you have a good joke? <laughs> no, I don't have a good joke. <laughs> the fingering one was the only thing I could come up with. It's funny how anesthetized I've become to that. Like, it never even enters my consciousness. But We've yeah. gone off the topic of yarn completely now. That's well, I asked my daughter these questions yesterday to see if she knew the answers, and she was like, Mom, you can't ask him that. <laughs> 
the second one. Not, I, yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought that was fantastic. Do you have a good joke? Tony, do you have a good joke? You should be yeah. full of PG jokes because I as a teacher. I know. Um, okay, uh, how does a cat like its steak cooked? I don't know. <laughs> Rare. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I, I'm looking forward to other guests as well. Yeah, me too. I think it's going to work. I it's think work. it's going to work. And it'll be amazing when they're actually in the I shop. I know it's going to be a lot better when they're actually in the shop. I can't imagine that at the moment. It's been so I long know. since we've it seen other long. people. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, so um, thank you, everybody who um, gave us feedback. Roll and play. Thanks. <laughs> now that you're in charge of my hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody, who gave um, feedback. And um, we had a couple of questions. Feedback on YouTube. Uh, yeah, feedback on the YouTube comments. on this so far. Do you have anything we'd like to, you'd you, like us to you. explore or talk about? Put the comments under the video on YouTube. Yeah, and so we... Please share and like these, you know. We, yeah, thanks. Subscribe. We're really appreciative <laughs> to people who've subscribed. Yeah. Um, so we were, I, I was, I was asked specifically, I was asked, mm -hmm. um, when I learned to knit and my kind of story around, um, fiber. So, um, I told you all about, um, Molly makes on the first segment, which is how I got into the industry. But, uh, before that, um, my mother-in-law is a knitter and, um, early on in our marriage, I think your mom was making something, uh, um, I think she was making like a little baby outfit or something for, um, a friend and, um, friend's baby, specifically. friend's baby, specifically not a friend that was a, yeah, that'd be weird. That would be weird. <laughs> yeah. And my mom taught you to knit. Yeah. I wanted to learn yeah. and your grandma too. That's um, my, she my nan also. did, yeah, yeah she was, yeah. they were knitters, yeah, my so, nan was a knitter. Yeah. Well, your mom still is. And so she um is. I wanted to learn and so my mother-in-law taught me how to knit and I, I didn't, I, it wasn't like I was, I've never been prolific in terms of um, my knitting in part because I'm a little bit of a workaholic and so it was more for relaxation and just to unwind. But um, when I joined Future Publishing in the UK, their whole craft division would meet up very regularly for lunch and um, bring uh, knitting, crochet, embroidery. And so I would join them. And um, we would have lunch and chat and hang out or have a coffee and uh, hang out with our uh, knitting. I've only just recently learned how to crochet. And I'd always wanted to learn how to crochet. I think crocheted edges on knitting are fantastic. I also really like if it, you know, if it's like a worsted weight or above, um, being able to crochet my seams. It's quick, it's easy, it's neat. So I really wanted to learn how to crochet. And so our yachter, yarn daughter, Patricia, taught me how to crochet. And actually Philip started me off with Tunisian crochet, which I found very intuitive because it's not hugely dissimilar uh, to knitting in terms of the concept of the back and forth, but I've kind of forgotten how to do it entirely. And then Patricia taught me how to do single crochet and double crochet and um, a, a magic circle, which I still require supervision with. I'm not very, I'm not a very good crocheter. Uh, despite the fact that I, sh I often teach beginner crochet, right. I find it kind of easy to impart knowledge. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, with something that I've recently learned, I can tell other people the way I was taught, and that's not hard. It's just if they ask an advanced question, mm. I'm screwed. Um, but um, whenever I teach it, it does come with the disclaimer that I've only just recently learned myself. Patricia does anything beyond uh, for Patricia me. does everything. She does everything. She does everything everything she at some everything. stage we'll interview her just as an interesting person yeah because she makes everything she's living like she her wears best her, makes her own clothes makes handmade her own cups, life yeah makes she's her ceramics, her own, her ceramics. Own yeah she does everything um she's making shoes uh i think leather work is going to be she makes next her own drugs if she's got a headache or something she makes <laughs> her own she doesn't but she does make her own soap 
She makes and soap. She makes soap and lotions. Felted, yeah, which lotions, I sell in the shop. Yeah. And lotion emollients. bars. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty incredible. It's just, I'm uh, creative in that. I paint. I paint pictures. Hmm. And I make music, but apart from that, I don't make anything else. I make the dinner. I make the bed. You don't make the bed. I make the bed. I don't even make the bed. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> but you do make dinner, which is awesome. Yeah. You're a great cook. I really, one of these days, we're just going to get you. We're going to, Skeeter nearly got you. You started a hat. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. 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 She started teaching Tony. I've taught Tony how to knit on numerous occasions. and you just I can knit. It's easy. Sorta. Of. Yeah. Yeah. I but he curl. gets frustrated. He doesn't like to. Um, I get fidgety. I like to get up and yeah. do stuff. Yeah. So we're we're we're. I think we're breaking him down. I think episode by episode by episode we're breaking him down. It's going to happen. So tune into episode one hundred and seventy six when I will actually <laughs> start it. <laughs> anyway. It's going well. well it's a good yeah, show. Yeah. I'm enjoying this. I'm looking right. for. We're enjo I enjoy these well, Sundays. We get it, together. We have coffee in the morning. We shower. Yeah. Not, <laughs> um, we get dressed and we come to the shop and we make the shows. And I just think it's nice. It was nice. To, I feel like a FIFA was here. It was nice to have yeah. a, a guest. Yeah, really. Good so to have a guest. you know, episode five. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows? Anything could happen. Anything, Anything could happen. At all. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. Are we done? I think we're done. Okay. I think we're done. Should we wave to them? Unless you can think of anything else that you want to share or... I got a few things, but let's save them until next week. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Ace up your sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to do like one final squish for the road? One squish for yeah, the road? Yeah, do it with um, Brooke's uh, yarn, Sincere Sheet. Okay. This Super is a, gorgeous. This has kind of got that interesting texture. I like that texture. Carmel. Look at that. Ooh. 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 Just squish it there. Feels good. Feels like well, that's a workout. That is. That's a workout. <laughs> okay. So anyway, thank you for tuning in to episode four. Please share our blog and <laughs> subscribe. Subscribe and tell your friends and hopefully we can get our viewers into triple figures. That'd be great. <laughs> anyway, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye.